esteemed guest who will come and make uh, his remarks and conduct the fundraiser. Can we kindly welcome our chief guest, Senior Council Ahmed Nasir Abdullahi. Karibu to Kiyangu. Rafiki ya Kenya Wote, Rafiki ya Wafugaji, Wakili Shupavu. We are proud of you. Karibu. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Governor Mandera, Governor Mo uh, Mo uh, Marcebet, all MPs, Senators, and all of you, ladies and gentlemen. Assalamu alaikum. Mimileo, my task here today is not uh, that big. I've been invited by Governor Roba, you know, to come and uh, do this fundraising. And when he told me to be the chief guest, you know, I told him I will gladly come. I will gladly come because this is something we have been waiting for long. I know before it, uh, there was another party, I think called Upa or something like that. I'm not very sure about it. <laughs> but I told the governor that I will come to his because his is indigenous. It is something that has grown up from Mandera or Northern Kenya. The other one I told him was something, you know, crafted, constructed in the office of the president. They globalized the MPs, and the easiest MPs to globalize is the MPs from Northern Kenya. <laughs> and uh, yeah, history will bear me out on that. If Uhuru or Raila tells them to come out and demonstrate, they will do it. But when it is for the people, they rarely do it. So, I mean, many of you said, you know, UDM is a, is a regional party. If you become a regional party, you will be the first regional party in Kenya. Because there is no regional party in Kenya. There is no national party in Kenya. I was hearing some people saying, you know, there is, I mean, Jubilee is a national party, or ODM is a national party. And I tell, I mean, they, I mean Jubilee is not a national party. Jubilee is not even a tribal party. Uh, Jubilee is owned by the president of Kenya. Yes. I mean, it is, you know, like, like all parties in Kenya, parties are owned by individuals. And that's why it was so easy for the president, for example, to remove his deputy because it is something personal to him. And when you see, you know, parties like Jubilee or ODM having, you know, different members, you know, different positions, different members, in law, Abdikadir or Issa will tell you, those are, they are called nominees. They hold the positions for the real person who owns it. He can remove them the next morning or he can leave them. So when you see, for example, my friend Murade or Tuju being Secretary General, those are nominees. Yes, because the party is owned by an individual. And the same applies to ODM. ODM is not a national party. ODM is not even a regional party. ODM is the private property of the Honorable Prime Minister, yes. <laughs> if he wants to remove someone, he will remove it. And there's nothing wrong. I think uh, I, was, I was telling someone, we, don't, we need to change, you know, the Political Parties Act so that we don't have registration. We need to have, you know, a certificate of ownership so that when you have your own party, you are given that certificate and it can trade either in a secondary or a primary market, like a private property. You know, to, to drive the point home that parties in Kenya are family owned. The best example I give you is Kano. Because when, President, when the late uh, Moi died, I mean, who inherited it? It is his son who inherited it. I have not seen uh, the will of the old man. But I wouldn't be surprised if he made a provision for Kano <laughs> in that way. You know, uh, but why I like, why do I like, you know, this party? I like this party because, you know, it's the first time, you know, previously people from Northern Kenya entertaining the idea alone used to scare them because they think either Raila will be angry with them or Uru will be angry with them. <laughs> that they have gotten out of this. And you know, it's like you have really, the Governor, I commend you, it's like an act of independence. You have now declared that the people of Northern Kenya will stand on their own. Yeah. You will not be owned by anybody. You will not be surrogates for others. If they want to come to you and negotiate with you, let them come on. But at least I'm happy that you have stood on your own. And you know why 
are the people of northern Kenya fearful of government? It's historical. You know, I mean, you are the only people who don't discuss your history, you know. For example, when the new constitution came in, uh, when, uh, no, when multi-party came in uh, 1992, most of you are not too young probably, but I was just finished my law school that time. One of the most important things that the 1992 amendment brought was not just, you know, multi-party democracy. It was the lifting of section, I think, 123 or 125 of the constitution, that 127, that declared Northern Kenya and the constituents, uh, you know, uh, I mean, the Tana River and the Lamu will be governed under emergency law. Because up to 1992, the entire Northern Kenya was under emergency law. The rights were suspended, and even the courts, I used to go to the court in Mandera when I was young. The DC used to come from his court, from his office. Then in the afternoon, he used to come as a magistrate. That came to 1992. But those are some of the things you should never forget about. I have never seen any of these politicians discussing, you know, the historic things that happened in Northern Kenya, the historic I mean, they just behave like, you know, they are from, you know, that Manbin Kembo and Madeira is the same, they are not. So we need a lot of, you know, decolonizing the mind. Your mind is colonized. And that is why, you know, forming this party is such a monumental step. You have, you know, you, you, have, you have broken the shacks of slavery, political slavery. This is the first time Northern Kenya has declared independence either from ODM or from Jubilee. And I think today is a day probably, Governor, all of you who are here, is a day you should have, you know, some celebrations every year once in a while because this is your Independence Day. <laughs> and you know, it's not only Northern Kenya, it's also cost, you know. If you look at, I mean, my friend, he's not here, but uh, Governor of uh, Gilifi, he tried to form party and, you know, he was fought all, everybody wants to fight him because people don't allow minorities to have their parties. People want minorities to be dominated by the main uh, uh, blocks, you know, the power blocks. So when, when Kingi wanted to form party, I mean, I mean, uh, Raila was livid. I mean, it's like he has lost part of his territory. And that is why the parties, you know, the big parties from the other parts of Kenya will never allow either Northern Kenya or coastal regions to form their parties. And those two regions have their own history, you know. You must, you must appreciate where they come from. I mean, uh, the first time when the president, you know, said that he was forming, uh, he was spending, I think, billions of shillings on what he calls uh, Mau Mau Roads. I tweeted, I said, it's a good idea. And I said, I, we need shift the roads. <laughs> because that's part of our history, you know. Of course, many people commented about it. And I think last week, last, I mean, Jamuri Day, I mean, uh, Mashuja Day, the president said that the Mau Mau Roads are like dual carriage from Nairobi to Mombasa. They are that long. But, I mean, people don't appreciate you know, the significance, the symbolism the president is driving home when he's building so much roads and calls them Mau Mau. It's a very strong statement, very strong statement of where the power politics in this country plays. I mean, he's not just building roads, he's calling them Mau Mau. He's sending a message to say that this country belongs to certain people. And I think that some symbolism is very profound. Uh, you know, I mean, many politicians will tell you that, you know, there are no tribalists, that, you know, this country needs nationalism. Those are meant for small tribes. Eh? When you hear a leader saying that, you know, he's a nationalist, he wants to bring Kenyans together. He is not a tribalist. That is tribalist number one. Because he is using that cover to practice tribalism when he's telling the smaller communities that they don't. And there's nothing wrong with being a tribalist. Yes, yes. There's absolutely nothing wrong because the reality, you know, there's, there's the empirical things, you know, what you see as a reality. The em empirically, all our leaders are tribalists. I mean, who is a tribalist? And everybody knows that. And he doesn't even shout about it because every appointment he makes, he makes on a tribal basis. So there's nothing wrong with that. Uhuru, I mean, Raela is a tribalist. It's only you guys who get scared to be called tribalists. You should wear 
that time as a badge of honor because you are just being truthful. But I tell guys, you know, like when I mean, it's sickening because you will always hear, you know, the president saying that, you know, uh, Kenyans, I want Kenyans united. Of course, the president doesn't want Kenyans united because he knows it. But it's meant for consumption. You know, it's for, meant for me. the people of Mandera will hear that and they think Uru is saying, you know, something great. He isn't saying something great. He wants to make you believe what he is saying, and he does the opposite. And that is, you know, what it's all about. And uh, you know, elections are coming up. Everybody knows. I, I think. Let me say first. I'm a friend of UDM. Everybody here said that he's a friend, so I'm also a friend of UDM. And at the right time, the governor will probably hear from me. But you see, election is coming. Uh, you guys, will, I was hearing a lot of, you know, these cliches that when you are not on the table, you are on the menu. No, this then, or not then Kenya, or the cost. You have always been on the table, but you have been silent. Yes. You have been silent. Our MPs are silent. Our senators are silent. And it's because of that silence, people assume you don't exist. I mean, when I was a student, I mean, Northern Kenya, Northern Kenyan coast used to have very vocal in peace. I mean, coast used to drive the politics of this country because they used to talk. But now all those have kept quiet and uh, I don't know what happened. I don't want to say what happened, but I think my guess is as good as yours. But election is coming back. And uh, in law, there is something, Abdikadir uh, again and Issa will tell you, there is something called Estobel. There is something Estobel by conduct or Estobel by record. When someone has done something, then he wants to change the narrative and comes to you and tells you, you know, I will do for you this. You say, no, no, there's Estobel. Your record speaks for yourself. Your conduct speaks for yourself. So you don't allow him to change the narrative you hold him to his track record. And that's what I want the Northern people to hold the new parties. When someone comes to you and says to you, you know, I will, I will add, I will make a devolution 35%, I will build roads, you tell him, okay, what was your record? I mean, you ruled, or you are in power, or you are close to power, or you are the proponent or, uh, of uh, BPI. When BPI was there, did you say Northern Kenya should get, how many seats did they say? One, yes. It, you know, BPI was one of the most radical attempt to reconfigure the politics of this country. It has, I mean, nobody ever thought to change the country that radic radically than BPI. It was a most audacious attempt. If it, will, if it will have succeeded, Uhuru will have achieved what no president in this country will have achieved. He will have changed the politics of this country for the next 50 years, because he will have ensured that, you know, Gidurai alone, I think, will have had maybe three MPs. That small place where you see the crowds. <laughs> I mean, the whole Northern Kenya, they say they will not have a single MP. And, uh, you know, it is sickening, you know, all these MPs who are here, some of them, you know, they, they did us a sujut in parliament, say that they are praying for the president that this is very good that Northern Kenya is not getting a seat, that they are happy with it. I mean, now you are, now you are saying, oh, we are former, we, were, we are not on the menu, we are, on the, we are not on the table. Of course, you are there. So the biggest proponents, the people who pushed the BPI was from Northern Kenya. Yes. And it was designed, you know, to subjugate you. It was designed. Let me tell you, and everybody knows that, and I think both you know, the president there and Raila did not say it, but the BBI was designed to put Northern Kenya, this pastoralist community from Turkana to Mandera to in their rightful place. It was an attempt, it was an attempt to dilute or to roll back the little you got from devolution. Yes, yes, that was the design. That is why 70 MPs were created and 35 went to central Kenya. I mean, it's not logic, it doesn't make sense. But it was a very serious political blueprint. It, it was a white paper on how this country should rule the near future. So I hope, you know, those guys of you who are going to parliament, 
when either ODM comes to you or Jubilee comes, I think Jubilee is dead. Uh, no, nobody is brave enough to say it's dead. I was here in the, the, the senator for Kambu talking about the colors. Huh? Yes, yes, it's dead. Eh? And uh, personally, although I say I'm a friend of Jubilee, I don't mind appearing at the last ritual of this party when the time comes. But uh, I mean, when, when election comes, I want you, you know, people of Northern Cape to consider, you know, the past, what happened, so that you chart your course properly. And I think this party that we are raising funds today for UDA is very, very appropriate. Last point I would like to raise is, I think you have been reading the papers about this lawyer who has disappeared, uh, Dr. Nandua, Hassan Nandua. Uh, you know, unfortunately, I mean, K people think Kenya is very strong, but Kenya is a very weak state because institutions don't work in this country. There is no parliamentary oversight of the executive. Even uh, the budget, you know, once you pass, I don't think it's long, long for the treasury, you know, disperses money according to what the executive wants. But, they, but, but there are no checks and balances. In a civilized country, what is happening in this country now where people are disappearing, you know, left, right, center. And I think there was a very graphic video last night on TV where, you know, cars stopped and people were being taken out of out of the cars. It reminds me, for those of you who know a little bit of history, in the 80s, you know, Haiti used to have a man called Babadok Duvalier. And he used to have guys called, you know, Tom Tomutuk. You know, the, the, the equivalent of J.C. Uh, Lamuze. So when he, when he took from power, when, when he gave power, his son took over. So he was called Babadok Duvalier. So, I mean, they used to have these extrajudicial killings where people are just literally grabbed from the streets and you don't know where they go. And that has become the norm in this country now, especially if you are Somali or if you are Muslim or if you are from the coast. And it is an alarming situation. Any civilized country, you know, any civilized country, parliament will have called a serious meeting and hold, you know, parliamentary hearings on why Kenyans are disappearing. But, um, but I think it's a little bit far-fetched to expect our parliament to conduct such a hearing unless they green, uh, get green light from OP, which green light will not come, and which means that that problem will continue. But I think as a country, we need to hold the government accountable. Parliament, of course, may have failed. The judiciary has done very well, but even judiciary, I mean, they are trying to capture it. It's difficult because when we were there, some of us, we put strong foundation for it, and they are, not, they are eternally unhappy with that. So I think we need to address, especially for leaders of the Muslim community, why are people being, why are people disappearing? Where are they being taken to? Who is making them disappear? Isn't it the state organs? Why isn't the parliament holding emergency hearings on this matter? So somehow, somehow these are some of the things I will, I will leave you to ponder over. Again, I'm very happy about uh, my presence here today. Uh, I think it's the time when we should raise funds for this party, UDM, and know that this is our party now. This is our party. Just the way, I mean, Raila has his own party. The lawyers have their own parties. Yes, everybody has his own party. I mean, I was, look at, uh, I mean, I was seeing uh, 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 Madam Aida endorsing a candidate for the governorship of Nairobi, Wanyonyi, the, the MP. I mean, that, that is now gone. I don't think there will be any other candidate that will contest. <laughs> and that shows you, you know, how serious uh, decisions are made in parties because these are family parties. If a member of the family decides, that is it. So this is our party from today on, people of Northern Kenya. And I think there's nothing wrong with us having a tribal party. But governor, I want this to be a tribal party. <laughs> because there's nothing wrong. Everybody has a tribal party. I mean, Jubilee is a tribal party. Some of them have family parties. And, uh, you know, let Kenyans form their own tribal parties. Then they can come to Nairobi to have a convention where the national government now can be constituted. But it's only, again, please note that it's only minorities that are not allowed to have parties. And those minorities are either in the north 
or in the cause. And it's because of historic. You must know where the history of this country comes from. Northern Kenya has its own history. Coast has its own history. The power play in this country does not uh, help those two. And now it's my pleasure, you know, to <laughs> raise funds. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we are, I, and I want to, you know, if, if you are very serious about this party, if you are serious about this party, I want you to give more than you have given to Jubilee and ODM. <laughs> because you are the people who fund those parties. And if you don't give generously, then we know where your loyalty lies. So we start with the organizing committee. Uh, you know, Grand Muller is a straight talker. That's why it's called Grand Muller. But uh, you know his political leanings, already people, everybody knows, he's signed good information. But we'll tell him his candidate and other candidates are all welcome to UDM. So, I know where you lean. But we are